One thing this government could focus on is the fact that woke politics is making our universities more stupid. And I mean that literally, measurably. And stupid universities will in time make this whole country stupid as well. This is Albert Einstein. He is the genius and Nobel Prize winner who gave us the theory of relativity, helped us to understand how gravity affects the fabric of space-time. This is Thomas Edison, who invented a durable light bulb, movie cameras, alkaline batteries and much more. And this is Isaac Newton, one of the greatest mathematicians and physicists of all time, developed the theory of gravity. Brilliant minds, all of them, but not one of those geniuses could today get even an interview with the Australian National University, not for one of the up to 10 new jobs it's just been offering. Because not one of these geniuses would be good enough. They are men. And the ANU has actually banned men from applying for any of the up to 10 new jobs teaching and working in space technology at its Advanced Instrumentation and Technology Centre. These jobs, every single one of them, are reserved for women only. Now, the university defends this astonishing sexism by saying, well, we need to do it to even up the, the gender imbalance among the scientists and technicians working on its advanced telescopes. Seems that too many of them are men. And it's used this same ban on men in its Mathematical Sciences Institute. Other universities now have also been banning men. Sydney University has advertised women-only jobs as well in stellar astrophysics and in dark matter research. Women only, no men, even if they're actually the very best. These universities would rather hire a bad woman for these jobs than a brilliant man, another Einstein. In fact, even a research fellowship named after perhaps the university's greatest physicist, Harry Messel, can now not be won by men just like him. Again, women only. And you thought the left were against sexism? Totally wrong. They're totally for sexism. As long as the sign on the door says no men may apply. Joining me is Bella de Brera, Director of the Foundations of Western Civilization Program at the Institute of Public Affairs. Bella, thank you so much for joining us. The Australian National Institute is offering up to 10 new jobs in astrophysics. Men are banned from even applying. These jobs are only for people identifying as women. Uh, to even up the gender balance, of course. Your response? Oh, look, Andrew, uh, my response is, as always, this is a terrible story, and it really shows us in, in technicolor how woke our universities are and how um, absolutely pointless they are now. There used to be places where you'd go to learn things, to pass on knowledge, to learn about life and culture and society. Now all there is is this one totally claustrophobic orthodoxy that everyone has to buy into. Um, there is no freedom of speech, there's no debate, there's nothing. This is pure discrimination. I feel so sorry for the male students in this field at ANU. Uh, what hope do they have of getting a job uh, when they can see that women go in front of them? They can't even apply for some of the jobs that are now in their field at their university. What's the point of study, they may well ask? Well, that's a very good question. And if I was a young man thinking about um, my career, and my career prospects, and I was really interested in studying engineering, I would probably think twice because, you know, with, with, with these kind of things, uh, with news like this, you'd be completely reluctant to, to take on any kind of debt um, with the prospect of um, being discriminated against at the end of your three or four years of, 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 your, of your time at university. It's, it's, you know, discrimination has absolutely no positive outcomes. In this case, I think you could say that it is probably very bad for the women who get the jobs because they'll be wondering their entire careers whether they got the jobs because of their sex or whether they got the jobs because they're actually qualified for it. And of course, it disc discriminates against the men amongst whom there are possibly very, very bright and very, very talented people who just don't get the job. Um, so, you know, they call it positive discrimination, but there's nothing positive about it at all. 
Oh, well, on that point, that the women who get the jobs will always have that sneaking suspicion, and it's actually more than a suspicion that they're just, you know, token appointments. One of the ANU bosses who have been actually pushing for these women-only jobs is... Uh, just left the university now, was Professor Lisa Cooley, who said, well, open and transparent female-only hires avoid implicit bias towards male applica applicants. Well, <laughs> it avoids it by actually excluding them. Um, but she adds this. One of the main concerns regarding female-only positions is exactly what you've just said, is that the recruited female hired may be labelled as a token woman. And this concern, she mm. said can be mitigated by making female-only positions highly prestigious. Uh, Bella de Brera, how can you make a job prestigious when you have, from the start, banned probably 60% of the applicants simply because they're male? How do you make it more prestigious? I suppose you just give it a more prestigious title and, 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 and you pay more. But, you know, and the question is, and the problem is, is that the more prestigious the title the more those people occupying those positions will be judged and held to much higher standards. Um, and I've, I've, I've encountered this before, you know, um, with, with women being appointed as CEOs, always wondering whether they were appointed because they are worthy or because they're, they're women. This, this, this does a disservice to women, and I think it's quite insulting because they're also saying women can't get there on their own. They need, they need, they need a leg up. <laughs> because because they're not capable of of, of 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 occupying these senior positions by themselves on their own merit. So, as I as I said, there is nothing positive about discrimination. Well, let me just uh, as they say in these uh, woke uh, faculties, let me interrogate their uh, their the reasons that they give. They say, well, the theory is that the the more women they get in a workplace traditionally dominated by men the more other women will feel inspired and brave enough to go work there as well. What do you make of that argument? Well, it's already been disproven, that argument in Sweden, which is possibly the most um, equal society in the West where, where it is known that men and women have absolutely the same uh, um, opportunities. Um, and still, women don't choose jobs in STEM. They, they can if they want to, there's nothing stopping them, but they're traditionally they're more inclined to go for jobs that deal with people rather than things. And this is, um, you know, most people um, have read and, and, and listened to Jordan Peterson talking about this, um, and, and most of the progressive left absolutely hate what he says, which is that there is a difference between men and women. Men are attracted to some things and women are attracted to the other. So, so this argument holds, holds no evidence whatsoever. It's in, in fact, it's been shown that men and women traditionally choose and are attracted to different things in life. Um, and so this positive discrimination, this kind of, you know, um, equality of outcomes just will never work. Well, it will work, except, uh, of course, you've got to sacrifice the fact that, uh, you know, uh, talented people aren't going to get jobs simply because of their gender and less talented people will fill them instead. And as you say, uh, to overcome this lack of prestige, they'll be paid, probably paid more. So we'll be paying more for less. And if our telescopes don't actually work properly, well, tough. At least they were made by people identifying as women. And you've got to be grateful for that. Bella de Brera, thank you so much indeed for your time. Thank you so much, Andrew.